Elon Musk does nothing in short measures, and he won't stop with the rockets SpaceX makes. With spacecraft as large as water towers, grain silos, and even larger than the Statue of Liberty, SpaceX's grand ambitions are very well manifested physically. Humanity's come on a long way from the days when the thought of an airplane was deemed futile, and now we have heavy crafts flying into outer space, some even reusable. The big question in this video is just how large these vehicles are, and how do you get something that big to fly? Stay with this video until the end to find out all we know about SpaceX's massive rockets, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Rockets are enormous, however, no one seems to know just how tall these rockets are, and that is because whenever we see these rockets, they are either standing alone or floating through the air. Sometimes they are kept next to a large building or even on a big boat, giving us a clear visual sense of how big they really are. For example, when we say that the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket stands at 230 feet tall, it is easy to wonder exactly what it implies. Something as unpredictable as the landing legs on the Falcon 9 rocket can be huge when compared to everyday objects in scale. At 29 feet long, it has a height greater than some houses. Considering that the actual Falcon 9 is almost the height equivalent of a 21-story building, the landing legs seem minuscule in comparison. The Falcon Heavy boasts almost three times the power of the Falcon 9. They may be the same height, but is much more powerful, as it demonstrated on its first trip to space where it delivered a Tesla Roadster into orbit. The height of these rockets makes them look deceptively thin, but upon closer inspection, these rockets are sometimes as wide as a sizable portion of a basketball court. With up to 12 feet in diameter, thin is not a thing with SpaceX's earlier rockets. As impressive as these sound, they have no comparison with SpaceX's new rocket in development. The Starship will be one of the largest rockets ever built when completed, because it's going to stand at a whopping 393 feet tall. Let's put some rockets into perspective. The Falcon rockets, which stand at 70 meters and was SpaceX's pride and joy before the Starship was thought up of, is first up. And then there's the Russian Genesee, which is going up to 80 meters. We also have to look at the Long March 9 from China, which measured a whopping 93 meters, and then the ambitious NASA SLS Block 1 is up next. It stands 98 meters tall, and is America's proposed replacement for the Space Shuttle. The Soviet R1 follows at a distance of 105 meters, and then there's the legendary Saturn V, which stands at the height of 110 meters. The NASA SLS Block 2 cargo version, which stands at 111 meters, is the closest contrast to Starship, which stands at 120 meters, rounds off our list. Wondering just how large 120 meters is? That's the equivalent to a 28 to 35 story structure. When Starship prototypes are positioned atop its launch pad in Boca Chica, Texas, it is very easily the tallest structure for hundreds of miles. However, talking about its size isn't enough to convey what exactly this behemoth is all about. What's equally impressive, if not more so, is how big this thing is, with a diameter of 90 meters or 30 feet. Now let's talk about how these beasts are made. First up, the Falcon 9. The Merlin engines are housed in two metal octaweb structures that is critical to Falcon 9's first stage. The rocket's previous models had nine engines grouped in three rows of three. Eight engines are grouped in a circle around the central one in the octaweb. It's more than just a matter of aesthetics, that the engines are arranged differently. The octaweb shortens and lightens the Falcon 9 thrust structure, making the rocket's design and assembly much more straightforward. Streamlining the production process lowers launch costs in the long run. The next important part of it is interstage. Any multi-staged rocket requires an interstage. This section links the first and second stages, as well as houses the second stage's engine which is protected throughout the initial stages of flight. The interstage divides the two stages at the right time, allowing the second stage to fire safely. This is referred to as the moment of staging. Separating rocket stages is a very difficult task, but the Falcon 9 makes it much easier. SpaceX uses an all-pneumatic stage separation system, unlike most rockets which use a complex pyrotechnic system of explosive bolts to separate stages. This device can be checked on the ground and it also ensures the rocket will be less jarred during staging. Of course, most importantly is the engine. The Merlin engine, which is designed in-house by SpaceX, is at the heart of the Falcon 9. 
The first stage of the rocket has nine of these engines clustered together, while the second stage has a single Merlin optimized to fire in a space vacuum. Rocket propellant 1, rocket grade kerosene and liquid oxygen are used in these engines. The first stage engines burn for 162 seconds, and the second stage engines for 397 seconds in a typical Falcon 9 launch. The Merlin engine is one of the most powerful and efficient engines ever created. The fact that there are 9 of them in the first stage provides some built-in protection. On other rockets, if an engine fails during launch, the payload's chances of reaching orbit are severely reduced. However, the Falcon 9 is designed so that if two of the nine Merlin engines in the first stage fail, the launch will not be hampered. Healthy engines will burn for longer periods, taking up the slack and saving the mission. Now, let's consider the doubly reusable Starship. The upper stage of Starship is designed to serve as a second stage for achieving orbital velocity on launches from Earth as well as a long-duration spacecraft in orbit. This stands in stark contrast to the majority of previous launch vehicle and spacecraft concepts. The Starship will be able to re-enter Earth's atmosphere from orbital velocities and land vertically, with the intention of rapid reusability without the need for extensive restructuring of the vehicle. According to Musk, the overall expedition scheme would have to involve propellant processing on the surface of Mars when Starship is used for Beyond Earth Orbit BEO, launches to Mars. This is needed for the return trip and the reuse of the spaceship to keep costs down. Without lunar propellant depots, destinations around the moon, which include circumlunar flybys, orbits and landings, will be possible as long as the spacecraft is refueled in a high elliptical orbit, before the journey to the moon starts. The Starship upper stage is estimated to be 9 meters in diameter and tall with a dry mass of 120 tons or less, powered by six Raptor engines, and capable of being a completely reusable spacecraft. The Super Heavy Booster stage will be 72 meters long and 9 meters wide. It's going to be made up of stainless steel tanks and structures that will carry subcooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellants, and be powered by 28 Raptor rocket engines with a combined liftoff thrust of 72,000 kilonewtons. As the comprehensive design was confirmed and the Raptor engines were tested and reached higher power levels, the Super Heavy exterior design was modified in 2019 to 2020. A design update for the booster stage was addressed, from six fins that function solely as fairings to cover the six landing legs and four diamond-shaped welded steel grid fins to provide aerodynamic stability on descent. Musk changed the leg configuration to only four landing legs and fins in August 2020 as the first construction of Booster Prototype 1 was about to begin. With the Starship being manufactured and tested on the same site, only the Falcon 9 rocket has had much need for transportation. The Falcon 9 rocket's components are transported to Florida on the back of huge semi-tractor trailer trucks, before being returned to Hawthorne. The Merlin engines are individually sent to Texas for inspection and test firing. The engines are connected to the first stage after everything is checked, and the fully assembled first stage is transported to Florida on a 44-wheel trailer. Elon Musk has tweeted that the next rocket coming out of SpaceX may be an 18-meter tall one. Do you think big rockets essentially equate to being effective? Let us know what you think, and thank you for watching one of our videos. While you're still here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!